Okay, here I am in my garage again, and um, I do have something new. I've got a charging port over here, eh, over here. I uh, finally had to get rid of my truck. The, uh, I had some frame damage that I just could not repair, and I did not feel safe driving other people around in, so I sold it. And I now have a Jeep 4xE, right there. And so it's used, and it's already had some problems. I've got a little over 4,000 miles on it from me. It's got 42,000 miles on it now. And uh, shocking, it has problems, just like used vehicles do. So I've already had the high-voltage battery replaced, which was under warranty, fortunately. And the battery heater module, I just totally blinked on the name, uh, went out. I got uh, code P03, no, sorry, uh, P0E15 and it said that it was the battery heater module, so I'm like, I thought I'd give it a shot. I cannot stand dealership prices, and can't find anything online really of somebody changing it, but uh, here it goes. Now, keep in mind, I am a novice at uh, high voltage systems. I've done quite a lot of work on internal combustion engines, but uh, this is new to me, and so if you're in the comments, feel free to butcher me on how I did it, but uh, I got it done. And this is how I did it. And then at the end, I'm going to have the uh, sections of where how I screwed up. So if you want to try to avoid that, uh, jump to the end when you're done or watch it all the way through, whatever works for you. But uh, I screwed up a lot. These are the items I used to uh, do the replacement. Hose clamps to uh, clamp the hoses down so I'd minimize leaking, vice grips, the 1,000-volt gloves, uh, rubber stoppers, a funnel my socket set, and then two gallons of coolant. And I'll explain why I needed two later, but uh, yeah. And then that's the actual part I replaced. One thing about this repair is uh, it's not a standard video where I actually filmed me taking everything on and off. The I'll go over a little bit later too, but the hose clamps for the coolant, they glued those suckers on there. And I read a form that actually said that that's what happened. They didn't just rely on the clamps themselves. They glued the hoses to the module. And that was a pain in the butt. It took me about an hour and a half to get those things off. And frankly, I got mad and uh, put the camera down and just fought it for an hour and a half before I got them off. So unfortunately, I do not have a full normal, like watching me do it the whole way through. So I'll do the best I can because frankly, after I got this thing done, I had to end up taking it off one, two, three times you know, before I was finally done. But uh, you'll see that at the end of the video. Okay, so I put the camera down because I'm trying to do this by myself, but uh, I've already disconnected the, or I've loosened the bolt on the uh, negative and then the positive as well. Let me show you the current voltage on it. You know, that's normal for a 12 volt battery. And then when you take it off, this is gonna show the discharging of the capacitors. See? slowly going down so you want to wait till it is uh, zeroed out before you actually touch anything 12 volts not as big a deal as the you know the main battery pack which is 400 something but uh, shows the same principle okay this is the main battery pack underneath my back seat and this is the panel you want to take off to disconnect the main battery from the rest of the system I'm told that's what it does if you trust the internet, which uh, I've checked many sources, and that's, what's, that's what it says it does, but uh, just because this is off and it says it's disconnected, still treat all the orange cables with a amount of respect. So I'm gonna take off the eight bolts. This is, uh, I now have taken out all the bolts and I put on my gloves because I am near the high voltage. So I just slide this up and it has these two pegs. Something about those two pegs actually allows the uh, battery to continue the flow. I've not actually researched it, but uh, not to know exactly how they work. But uh, anyway, so I take that out and set it aside. And this is what it looks like on the inside. It actually has a couple spots for a multimeter. And from what I read, it's supposed to read zero when you put the leads in. Here it is with the leads in. And it's reading zero like I'm afraid it should. Next, I'm removing five bolts. There's one here, 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 and one at the far end. Okay, I'm currently underneath the front passenger side door. And this is the battery heater module. 
So, it has four screws that hold it in place. There's two there. And closer to the actual door, there are two more right there. Leave those on to the end. Now what I did, because I've been read everywhere that uh, battery, or sorry, not battery, but uh, the coolant in the hoses getting into the high voltage line is bad. So I left the electronics on till last and took off the coolant hoses first. This is this one. And then on the other side, there's another one. Let's see if I can find a good view. Here it is. That one right there. There's a ground wire, which is right here. That nut right there. So I took off the hoses first. I started with this one, which was closer to me and not closer to the actual frame. So I, since I had more room and frankly didn't know what I was doing. So I took a pair of vice grips and clamped that open. I'll show a picture sort of of it. And then pulled this hose off. Now, when I say I pulled that hose off, that took me an hour and a half because apparently I don't have the right tool for it. And from what I read afterwards, Jeep does not just rely on that clamp. Ho that clamp. They glue the hose onto the module, which was very annoying. It took me an hour and a half to get both of those suckers off. So, loosen the clamp and then dug around and then used the flathead screwdriver because I don't have the actual tool to get in there to get that glue broken loose, and then I was able to get it off. Then I did the same thing on that side. I bought these rubber plugs and plugged up the holes while it was still mounted inside the Jeep as coolant was coming out to try to minimize the spillage. This is version AB. Now the new one I have is version AC. I'll see if I can see it. This is the new battery heater module installed, and you can see it's got that new revision, the uh, ending in AC. What I did is use one of these hose clamps that I got off Amazon, there's a link, and put it around the hose and clamped it down so that I would minimize leakage. Now it does not stop leakage completely. It will still drain slightly, but it's much better than having a completely open hose. Here is a really bad image of me capping off the uh, three quarters inch plug, the actual coolant hose going into the module. And uh, but you can tell it's there, it's just really blurry. But uh, sorry about that. This is where the ground wire connects to the frame. I actually disconnected it here because it's easier to get to than the actual screw up there. Then, after that, I disconnected the data line right there. And there is a, just like most of these things, there's a red tab on top you have to pull towards the wire, not the actual module to get it loose and then you can push in on a push tab on top and then it slides out. Same thing with the high voltage line. There's a red tab on top, pull it back towards the actual cable away from the module and then you can slide the whole thing off and it comes off to here. I want to call out there is a strap tie right here. You have to cut because uh, that allows you to get the high voltage cable even further out of the way so you can get this done. One thing that I did do, because there's nothing wrong with a good bit of paranoia, is when that high voltage line was uh, off and dangling, I took off one of my gloves and put the line inside the glove with my other hand and to help protect it from uh, touching anything. And then just left that wrapped around the cable while I worked on everything else. And just for a little extra safety. After that, then you just take off the four screws I pointed out, and then it slides out. Now, when I say it slides out, it's not exactly easy. You have to, it will come out. You just got to pull it towards you and then angle it, and then it will come out this way. Now, these hoses, you have to push way out of the way. So and then just reverse the steps that I just mentioned, and you're good to go. It's actually, I, at least I found it easier to slide it back in than getting it out. But, as you can see, it's got the high voltage. And then over here is the uh, data cable and the ground. And there's one coolant line. And there's the other. This is one we actually filled today. And this is actually day three. And I actually don't need to add anything. It's sitting at the max level. 
Now for the where I screwed up portion of this video, and so let's go. This is all of the components I had when I started. I had the high voltage gloves, I had the new module, I had a screwdriver, and I had some radiator coolant. And that's it. The things I did not have, I did not have a clamp to clamp the hose. I did not have these little rubber grommets to plug the holes. And the larger one for the actual hose that comes off of here. So when I took off the actual hose and um, I got to thinking about it, I thought it was the smaller uh, coolant reservoir. So I'm like, oh, how much coolant could there be in there? And lo and behold, it had a lot. So when I took off that first hose, I drained about a gallon of coolant really quickly and uh, could not get anywhere quick enough to uh, stop the flow. And I did not have any of the tools necessary to clamp it. So yeah, I lost a whole gallon or so of coolant. Good job. So after that fiasco, I uh, went ahead and continued on with putting on the module. And I did succeed in getting Revision C's module on there, and here's here's good old B. I put that module on there and was able to get it going. Thought, great, good. And so I still thought it was the other coolant reservoir. So it was a little low, and it turned out it was actually not low due to me. It was due to the uh, dealer who had actually underfilled it, and I didn't know it at the time. So I started the Jeep up, everything worked fine, and then drove it for a couple of miles, and then it overheated like crazy. There's an image here showing uh, very hot. I opened the hood and checked the coolant again and then actually popped open that uh, smaller reservoir and actually fill it to where it should be. Did not actually solve my problem. So I spent a couple days researching on the internet and that's when I found that uh, when I did this, I actually needed this. Ordered this off Amazon and the little rubber plugs. That's when I ordered those. It was great. So I've reasoned that since I put uh, AC on and all of a sudden I'm overheating, the coolant looks full. I did not refill the coolant to near the level of the amount that I lost. I'm like thinking I'm missing something that maybe it just needs to cycle for a while and it'll just get out some air. I've had that before, but never to this volume, but it's a new vehicle for me. So I let it lie for a few days. And then so after a few days, nothing got any better. I went ahead and uh, decided, okay, fine. I'm going to go ahead and put B back on there. And at least with B on there, I was able to drive it. So I took it all back apart and reinstalled B. So B's back on the Jeep, fired up, same problem. So that really ruled out the modules being an issue. So I had to figure out something else. And so then while I'm looking around, I, am, I have discovered that... Uh, I'm like, I've looked at these coolant reservoirs, nothing's been changing, so I'm like, fine. Well, what about the main one? None of the forums I'd read, none of the videos I'd seen showed that the main coolant reservoir was the issue. Pop that sucker open, and it is bone dry. I'm like, oh, there's my problem. So, I do not want to fill it with B still on there, assuming that C is good. I then again take off and redo the whole process and take B back off. Reinstall C and then put it back on and hope that uh, refilling it is going to do it. So I started then filling the coolant reservoir. And this is actually why I had two gallons in the initial video showing exactly what I used because it took more than a gallon to refill what I lost. I probably filled a gallon and a third back into the vehicle and it just sucked it up like crazy. It was it was dry. After that was done, I uh, capped it off, fired it up, and lo and behold, I could drive it like normal, and it was not overheating it any, or anything. Great. It looks like it's fine. So I actually started charging it, seemed normal, started driving it around, drove it a few miles, definitely did not overheat, took another 10, no overheat, but I'm hearing a lot of gurgling in the system. So I'm like, okay, now maybe I'm back down to air in the lines. It just needs to work itself out. So bring it home, let it cool off for overnight. Next morning, open it up, and yep, I need to add another, uh, oh, I don't know how much, but the whole uh, reservoir was uh, dry again, so I filled it as much as I could. It didn't take very much, but uh, did it, and then drove it around another day, and then stopped it, let it cool off, and then I kept adding until it got up to the max fill line, and I stopped hearing a lot of gurgling inside the unit, or the Jeep, and that's actually what solved my problem. It's been driving around now for about 
uh, I guess about a week, and I have no issues whatsoever. It's working like a champ. So I wish this video had actually included an actual uh, breakdown, but again, my, I was just so annoyed that night. I'm like, I'm not filming this. But then I got to the point of, I need to go and put something up because I can't find any of the videos of anybody breaking this thing down and maybe it'll help somebody. So here you go. I wish it had more of a step-by-step hands-on, but uh, I don't. If I ever have to do it again, I'll do something more thorough. But uh, right now, it's working great. Thanks for watching.